Uh, okay, being on black, your folks are just basically giving you stuff to put in your mind and think about. Uh, continuing basically on the last video, these are some super giants that were up at that UTC time. Okay, and then the uh, pa the factuality that we know that you just just looking at the map here, and if you look at NASA's map also at Fireball, the moon really should not have been visible. Okay, it should have been below the horizon. Now, reflection, who knows? Now, Antares would have been too far. And remember, you don't have to flip these. These are already flipped for you. It'll, it'll match up to what you're looking at when you're looking at the night sky at the fireball. Okay, so Tanab was there. Rather, we went through Saturn and I believe Mars. Yeah, Mars. So Mirpak. And then basically what I want to do is put out the system that basically uh, there's a lot of info that's been hitting the net about it lately. So uh, now remember these are already flipped so that when you're looking at them and basically this should be the same shot where the idea that you really shouldn't have had that be in the moon. Okay. It should have been too low in the New Mexico sky to be able to be picked up. Okay. At that UTC time. Now I could be proven wrong and it's the moon. But really doubt that you should have been able to see the moon uh, and basically well they don't put the moon in the in the but they they do have the super giants and a lot of constellations and stuff like that and if you say you need to uh, go through these here too that they're showing and uh, let's go look at this info now this is like 137 light years away so if people believe in anything you know, and I don't, March and so forth. Now, the possibility that there's other life form like us, identical or whatever out there, quite possibly. I don't think anybody should, can ever conclude that thinking in the box or outside the box. So, now, this HD 10 180, it is something like 137 light years away, so it's way the hell out. Now, uh, traveling in a vacuum, we should be able to sooner or later harness it if we have not already. Uh, I've got some theories on it that I basically want to put some patents on, but this is what you got for the mass of those objects out there and so forth and so on, and there's like, I mean, it's the only thing that's out there that, even though it's a long ways away, that's got anything to do with the idea of a sun and planets, okay, and I believe there's like nine of them, and so something to check out take a look at it. and yeah you know where I've got this from so it's no secret there so anyway uh, the mass of an object in here is basically uh, astounding it's like uh, let's get back down to that for a second here it's uh, 3.4 IU minimum mass okay now don't let this 65 times earth it's a spurious detection probability it's the idea of being able to that's how small earth is you see uh, and then the one thing is like all the satellites, which we know there's a new one at 300 miles up uh, up high orbiting today in the last 24 hours. So anyway, that uh, basic factual that the idea that this is huge, okay, 3.4 IU minimum mass is a Saturn-sized giant planet, okay. Well, I don't know why they say Saturn size because 3.4 IU minimum mass is not Saturn in size. I mean, the biggest thing we know is Jupiter. So there's kind of a misquote here for somebody, a typo, I believe. All right, now remember, uh, we've only got eight planets in, in the Milky Way that we know of, which we know that's not true because we've seen all the Soho shots and the Sechi and so forth and so on. So, okay? so that one's supposed to have nine, and it's 137 light years away. Okay, It's a sun with nine planets. Now, when you go in there, you'll get, if you start searching around, you and I can get more direct than what Wiki's got because I'll show you where that star is at. And that's the name of that star. Okay. Now, they will designatedly change the name of stars and so forth and so on. Okay. It requires binoc binoculars. It's 5900K effective temperature. Okay. One mass the size of the sun. So basically, it's an identical sun of our sun almost, pretty much in size. The sun star. Okay. Now, remember that planet is huge. Now remember the general area, and then remember we were talking about the meatball, okay? So now there's a Hertzberg, and yes, there's massive distances between such things, but you can see where HIP is 
75.99 that sun is supposed to be at okay and it is there okay it's there okay so factually there is massive distances between these stars and the suns that are out there and so forth but we do know electrical statically something's playing with the sun okay and factually as you're looking at the main supergiant's main sequence it's the main sequence down here in this alley, and then this is the giants, and this is the super giants back here. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and show you where the sun's at. It's just the idea that that's where the general area, nine other planets, and another, and that's correct, folks. The sun is in an angle with another galaxy, ladies and gentlemen, because HIP 7599 is in the super giants, and so is the sun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Antares in, and we'll get a position in the supergiant somewhat, okay? Because more than likely, we have to wor start actually more tilt, okay? Especially after such a big-ass earthquake, because look at what night sky was giving us, okay? Because that was the horizon there that shouldn't be in the horizon. The moon should have been too damn low to be able to pick this up in Arizona, okay? Because, number one, look at the shaded dark side of the moon. Okay, and the brightness here is on the east side, remember, look, and that's where the sun is and we rotate to it, okay? Remember, this is reverse for looking up at the bubble in the sky laying on the ground, okay, check it out. So no matter what, if it is the moon or what it is, it, we've got rotation if it, someone turns around and says it is the moon, okay? And you can also see that there's some stuff, you know, you got to take and blow it up on snapshot. Snapshot the bugger and blow it up and take a look, good look at it. Okay? And that's the UTC and time and everything. It was in Huntsville and also in... Showed up on. Now, in the Arizona one, it shows up more that maybe it could be the moon. Po quite possibly on positioning. But I wouldn't have thought that you would have been able to see it. So, there you go. Maybe it is the moon. Okay? But... Watch the nighttime sky. So Antares and Danab and stuff are super giants, okay? And Merpak, okay? So what we're going to do is we'll put Antares in with the sun. Okay, here you go, folks. And basically, Antares is easily visible with the naked eye. Visible to the naked eye. A duh, the sun. Requires binoculars on that star, that hip 7599, okay? But it's in the super giants, okay? And then let's go down and we'll see where it positioning wise okay now sure massive flipping distances okay matter of fact we even get a little bit what do we got here that's the light the years they figure it's old and all stuff when it'll die how old it is and when it'll die die off at a neutron star or something like that and everything okay so there you go that our sun positioned right now in the supergiants is pretty much probably a, a good distance from now let's go ahead and give us the distance between 7599 and then they tell us 137 light years correct and I'm not even sure I haven't checked yet but we're just gonna go ahead and I just basically throw this stuff out there and there's the Sun and there's Antares okay so Antares should possibly show up in the nighttime sky or possibly I mean and then it basically they say a duh you can see it you can see Antares with the naked eye, okay? The naked eye visible, visual, okay? Variable, okay? It has to be in a certain position, so maybe the meatball gets in the way? Who knows? So now we're starting to just get bleed on the truth here. So just showing you that the idea that we got antares in there, okay? And that, okay? So let's go check and we'll get a distance from HIP 7599 and the sun, see how far apart they are. And I'm sure it's going to be a massive distance. I'm not going to be shocked too much. But the idea, the factual, the massive distance in space that these suns and these stars are out there and up there and close together. And this HIP 7599 is close. And we've seen other Rigel Cantaris B and A are supposed to be close to the sun right now too. So let's get a distance on that. In a, in the, so now, correct, in the Hertzberg, it looks close. And they are because they're in somewhat the general area, but they are even closer than the 136 light years, 128.3 light years. Now, in our lifetimes, probably not, but in our children's lifetimes or grandchildren's lifetimes, space travel will be able to conquer that 128.3 light years. 
more than likely our grandkids, at least, you would think. And if they get off their ass, they could probably do it within our kids' lifetime, if they could live to like an average age of 70-plus years old or something like that. We don't really know what the average age is right now because insurance companies don't want you to know. Okay? So, uh, more truth. I'm not even going to look Ann Terry's up because you know by just looking at the Hertzberg that it's hell of way out there. Okay? So, anyway, no matter what, something was putting a pretty good glow on the moon last night because that could be the moon. It kind of should not be because the idea that it should have been low enough we should have barely been able to see it. So, no matter what, at the times, and if we go over to uh, the Huntsville one, okay, it's the positioning of the moon, and if it's got a dark side to it at all, it's hardly barely because of the sun and the supergiants. They're making it very glowed up large, okay, almost looking like a full moon, but it's not. Looking like a gibbous moon, and it's not. So anyway, but the factual is that we do have another galaxy close to us, okay? Because, I mean, 130 some odd, well, 128, because we know that that's closer, so it's 128 light years away. That's a hell of a distance, but travel in a vacuum, ladies and gentlemen, is not that far. So it's very much interesting stuff to go take a look at in the evening sky of a lot of stuff, okay? Especially since we got a lot of asteroids and stuff like that falling down. So you can always go and freeze this during the video watch. Watch all. So you can always uh, freeze this and watch it at a, you know, full full screen all the time. It'll be the best thing to watch the videos. So and then you can see these maps and so forth and so on. And those should match up with the size chart that I was showing you earlier. You go back to the front of the video. So, anyway, even though it's massive distance, remember, travel in a vacuum can be hella fast. And I've got some patents. Oh, basically to be made. And it's all locked in my head. Now, people with Star Trek fans, they don't, shouldn't get too excited because we have triangulation. And we've been showing you tons of Soho shots that basically... Now, let's go to look at Google here a little bit. Basically, Worldwide Telescope, I believe. We're going to take you through here for just a second, a little bit of a play through space, and then you'll kind of see what I'm trying to explain to everybody with this shot of the International Space Station today, with the factuality that all this stuff is out there. And this will just give you a little zoom around, playing around faster than me taking time to load something up on Worldwide Telescope and stuff like that and show you through this here. So don't get, you know, like we always try to say, triangulation. There's stars, and we've seen comets come by that Lovejoy was three pieces, at least, okay? And then there's been other material come by, and remember I was showing you at RSOE, the stuff, there's going to be some stuff. Matter of fact, I'll finish this out, we'll, we'll go, and then here, here you'll get a little idea. There's tons of stuff out in space, and remember to look at that picture that we showed you of this, uh, the International Space Station taking an actual shot of what it looks like up there to them out in space, just like what it looks like to everybody pretty much when we're looking at from uh, Hawaii's telescopes and stuff like that or any of the telescopes that look up at those webcams to be able to see all this stuff up in space, ladies and gentlemen. Check my last three or four videos and you'll see that space station shot because it's crowded out there. Not like what we've seen with them from all those fake shots from the moon. Okay, now I basically cut, got cut short a little bit because I wasn't watching the video time on the one video. So uh, the speed of, you know, we got 25.20 kil kilometers a second. Uh, that's hella fast, okay? And then that's what I said before, remember, there were three uh, objects in the one day. Okay, so that's going to be interesting there because now it's just that. But there's, you know there's going to be other material out there, okay, when that's coming around fast at that time. Then we also move down, and we have the other fast stuff is, okay, this one here, and then that's got uh, some other material with it, I believe, one the day before, and it's quite large because it's 860 meters, okay? And this one here is 1.1 kilometer. Now, remember that other one was something like uh, a pretty good uh, meter mass, too, if on the... 8.9 earthquake day, 8.7 earthquake, 8.6 they say, uh, Sumatra, I believe. And also this one's fast here, and then it has a big one following it, the 600 meter. 
and that one's moving fast. So it'll be interesting.